Hello, welcome to Adobe Office Hours. If you're just joining us for the first time ever or you're watching a replay, hi. If you don't wanna to listen to us talk, control right, skip right there. It's only for the replay. If you're watching live, you're stuck with us. Um, <laughs> you can jump straight to the lesson if you hit control and right. Who is this person speaking of right to my right? That's me, Nick Longo. And who is this person uh, right I, there to my uh, left? No, it's <laughs> it's it's the wrong way. I did it for the sake of the transition. But you're definitely on the left, Nick. Um, I am Andrew Hockrattle. Hi, hello. This is Office Hours. Uh, this is a show that we do every single Friday here on Behance.net slash Adobe Live, 2.30 p.m. Um, and before we get started, Nick, we do have a fun intro for the show to get started. Um, but I want to talk about people um, and how they can get involved. So check this out. Yeah. We have something called Discord. And Nick, what do we do in Discord? We do everything. That's like our way of communicating. We give you homework. Uh, everyone posts something really cool based on our last episode. But I think the best thing, and I'm sure anybody in chat would agree, is the community that it builds. And it's yes. so neat to have a great community of people that you can meet and talk to. Um, I see I, I see them there all week long exchanging ideas and everything. So why not get on board? Yeah, Great. hop into the Discord. Um, and today is a very special day because we will be using the Discord. We'll be bringing some people on live to the show, just like this. Elizabeth, uh, I, you're going to be on delay, but you're bringing in. Here we go. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you? Hello. Um, hey, so up? everyone, this is Elizabeth. She is always hanging out in our voice chat. And you can join her. Elizabeth, how do people join in the voice chat? Well, I can link it in the channel as well, but um, you join the Discord, and then th we also have an announcement that links to this channel. But yeah, just join the classroom chat above. Yes, there so do that. Go. go join Discord. Uh, bye, Elizabeth. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so you can go join the Discord and join the voice chat. We'll bring some of you on near the end of the stream as we work on some compositing stuff. Um, and you'll make suggestions. You'll be able to be on the show, which will be super fun. So go and join our Discord. All right, Nick, let's let's transition in, not to the lesson yet, but I have a conversation that I want to have. Yeah. What does Thanksgiving look like for you? Nick and I were talking about this before the show, and we love so Office Hours. Also, chat, you can vote. Um, do we want music or no? Chat, vote, let me know uh, if you want yeah, music or not. Yeah, let us know. What are, we, what are we doing? Today? Also, just again, if you're watching the replay and you're like, what is this show? Why are they talking? Hit control right, and we'll teach you how to do some compositing. <laughs> um, but all we right. got to talk food and tradition. We got to talk right? food and tradition yeah. for our live audience because that's what we love. Um, Nick, what does Thanksgiving look like for you? Because you're like, you have a very Italian family, right? Yes, very Italian. So we've been pretty much raised on the more Italian based lasagnas, manicotti, antipastos, uh, you name it. And then Turkey, <laughs> it's kind of like that. And uh, I'm vegetarian. So for me, it's literally a heaven of side dishes galore. That's, that's like the worst carbo loading you can possibly imagine. Imagine not having any meat in your Thanksgiving you're pretty much having nothing but carbs all day yes. long. So, all right, so that's got, kind of ours. What about yours, man? Uh, we got vibes going, by the way. We got music on. Uh, chat, let me know how the levels are. We're running a new setup. Um, so mine and also chat and Nick, I'm going vegetarian for the next month, starting Monday. So oh, Nick, I might very hit you cool, up for dude. some, uh, for some uh, recipes. All right, so yeah. um, my Thanksgiving, my family used to always go to, are you ready for it? Rainforest Cafe. Every year we go to Rainforest Cafe need, for Thanksgiving. We need some, some music vibes for that now. That was it, yeah. So um, we now like do traditional and whatever, but we used to always go to Rainforest Cafe. All right, that's enough talking. Five minutes is our max before I get hey, in Hey, tell trouble. us what you guys do on Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, Why yeah. not? It's it's July. That <laughs> this was, is the time to do it. That was the whole thing that I was like, oh, let's start the show and talk about that. And then chat can interact too. And I'm just like, whatever, chat. All right, chat, yeah. let us know what you do for Thanksgiving. Yes, we do know that it's July. Um, let's bookmark to re-air this episode on Thanksgiving. Let's. That would be great. I'll make a mental note. Hello, it. future people. <laughs> um, all right, let's go ahead and hop in. Nick, do we want to start in Lightroom? Yeah, you want to do a quick little demo there and start looking at some masking stuff that we've explored? Let's do it. And then uh, we will have our friends in chat join us for the end. Um, so you can get into that voice chat, hang out, and make your suggestions at the end for what we're making for our composite. Um, Ooh, I like that idea. All let's right, do it. Nick, you know what we're about to do. The hard cut for those control right people. Yeah. Let's jump into our lesson. And Nick, go for it. 
Welcome to some masking tips and some new features in Lightroom. You didn't care about what we had to say today, but we're gonna go right into it. Yep, thanks for hitting that hotkey and jump into the lesson. All right, I Nick. would do the exact same thing. It's true, it's true. <laughs> These guys talk too much. So let's go ahead and hop in here. You're seeing Nick's screen um, and yeah. Nick's in Lightroom, I believe, yeah. um, on desktop. This is, this is one of our shared folders that Andrew and I kind of uh, use for some of the shows. And what I wanted to do was there's some newer kind of features into masking. And let's always, I always love to say anytime we're doing anything in this world that I am a complete novice when it comes to Photoshop and most more importantly, Lightroom. I don't do a lot of photo retouching. So for me, it's kind of cool to learn along with you guys on these things. And I am just blown away at these features for masking, for uh, take, uh, adjusting, doing what you need to do with the tools that they have. Specifically, we're gonna talk a lot about what is new in masking. And I've just opened up a beautiful picture here of this car. Um, everything right from Adobe Free Stock. I love testing out things on that because you get really cool stuff to mess with, high resolution images. Yep, and we'll and drop a link in chat. If you don't know, uh, stock.adobe.com slash free. It's all yes. free stuff and it's great resources for you to use in your composites or as you practice masking with us today. Yeah, it's become like most used like bookmark in my toolbar. <laughs> I love it. It's so great to have. So we have all of our main controls here over on to the right. And I love the simplicity of Lightroom. I love that it has this power of a Photoshop, but it gives it to you in a much more simpler, almost like iPad desktop, uh, iPad way, right? So in masking, we're basically gonna click this open and we get all of this really cool settings here, ready to go to kind of help us out. And what I wanna do is mask just the car. And then we're gonna have some fun with it. I'm gonna show you some of the options that come in here, what you could do with options in masking. So right off the bat, if you look at your masking window here, you've got everything from select subject, select sky, you got this brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, color range, luminous, you got a lot of great stuff here. But for right now, what I want to do is basically just try to get the car on its own. And since it is kind of like the main subject in there, I'm going to click on subject uh, here, right? It's going to take a little second, and you're going to see immediately what happens. It is made a mask it, just of the car. It literally was like the conversation of like, hey, can you grab that for me? Oh, yes. this? Like, it's yeah. it's just the magic, like, oh, I don't know, I want like the car. And it's like, oh, this car? Isn't that just great? And I love the fact here that like with me, uh, I'm super great on layers when it comes to like Illustrator and, and uh, you name it, and getting into that into Photoshop as well. What I love about this is it's building them kind of like as you go. Um, I've just created that one mask that is a subject mask that you see here. Now what's neat too is it's overlaid in green. And if I want to, I can literally just click on the green overlay. And let's say that's, let's, if I was in the orange, you know, you're not gonna like see this, let's say because my color of the priority color here or majority color in my image is like an orange and burnt brown, right? So what I can do is switch to a color that's a little bit more different just so it can highlight as it's doing that. And then I can even play with the opacity of that mask, which I just thought was really kind of cool. The second thing that was really neat here is right now it is set on affected areas, but if you go to the unaffected areas, now what it's doing is just reversing that. And this is just a preference that you get to play with to see what you would be more comfortable in working with when you're going there. You can even just turn it off completely. It's still there, but you can turn it off. And then you even have these other things where you can say color overlay on a black and white. Look at this. So it's automatically turning everything outside of the mask, black and white. It's and turning the image black and white. That's right? great for contrast. If you're seeing like you oh, want hard edges totally. and you're like, I can't really make out Look the contrast. That. Yeah, there's like nine different ways to for you to see how good the contrast is or if there's an area that you need to add, an area that it's missing. Um, yes. It's fantastic. There's a bunch of ways that you can see that by kind of working through those options. Isn't that great? I, I just love this idea. But I've, I've literally done one click when you think about it. I just hit subject mask. Now I'm looking at just the options I have. So when this is all there, and let's say I want to make it a bit darker. So I'm, you know, going to pump up the shadows a little bit. I'm going to turn down the, the shadows. Exposure. Pump it up. Pump, pump it up. Yeah, there you go. And I'm going to turn the exposure down. Let's say I can bring those blacks a little bit more. I love that that kind of, and then here, I can bring the whites down a little bit. Now I'm just messing around with that, but let's say I do want to subtract something from that mask. Let's say we just want the headlights to not be affected by that, right? So if I go back here and just kind of like, let's bring everything back to where they were real quickly. Now with that selected, I'm gonna go to subtract. 
and you've got all these different ways I can do it. Now, let's say there was another subject in there that was being, uh, you can use that as its minus. I'm gonna do that in, a, in, a, in another kind of little quick demo. I can go all the way here to brush if I wanna do it manually, or I can do this like radial gradient. And you can see when you hover over, it gives you that cool, quick little demo of what you're going to be getting. So if I get this, and let's say I just want the, hot, the headlights to be a little bit more, uh, less affected by any changes I want from that mask. You can see what it's doing is it's actually turning it into the clear version. I'm not seeing that green overlay, right? So I love this idea here that I can do that again here. Let me get that here. There's that. Uh, and you know what this is really great for? This is really yeah. great for, uh, and this is a specific use case. This is really great for portraits where people are smiling because a lot yes. of times when you select the subject and you start playing around with it, uh, the whites of the idea. eyes and the teeth are going to yes. change as you bring out skin tones. Your teeth yes. and eyes will go yellow because you want those skin tones to be a little warm. Um, yeah. It will pull your eyes and your teeth into yellow and look gross. And so this is a great way to go in and mask those teeth out so that you're not changing them. Uh, yeah, that's just, that's, to, I, that's what I use it for um, to kind of work on the entire face without the teeth. Yeah, so think of it as like, I love the idea that you give you the add and subtract there to do whatever you want to do. I love that the highlights are already showing it a little bit clear, so I know what I'm gonna do is not gonna affect it. So if I really lower that exposure on the car, notice how the headlights oh, are not affected. Oh, that's so cool. That's very like um, George Miller Sin City, you know, where it's yes. like the like red and black when the whites oh, are like great. super, yeah. Yep, exactly. So look at that. So we've not affected anything with the headlights. That looks really, really cool. Great, I love that idea. I can click right here and see the original and then go back and see where I am right now. So the other cool thing we could do is we can do another mask with the, just the sky. Another so one? Forget, yeah, we did the first one and remember it was the car and you can see it's kind of labeled here as well. The greatest thing here is you got that kind of blue icon, kind of tells you exactly where to go for the next one. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna do the select sky. And this is great. So now what it's doing is it's taking a second, it's looking, it has found the sky. And now since that's such a, you know, the green maybe is not showing too much, I'm gonna click that green swatch and let's pump it up a little bit more so I could totally see, yes, that's we've awesome. exactly and what we need. The cool thing that's happening here um, is that it's also picking up the reflection of the sky on the hood, yes. right? You can see that there is some reflection on there and it's saying, hey, if you wanna select the sky, it should probably grab these little parts as well. Um, yes. which I love that it's finding just that little bit and it will change so that that sky is still reflecting within the photo. Um, there you go. I love that. So there's our original. Here's what we've done. So we still have our highlights there. I have got into that sky and I made a few quick edits. I popped the shadows, the um, tent up a little bit. But now let's say one other thing we could do is a gradient, linear gradient mask. And what's neat about this is I'm going to show you how you can subtract something from it. We were talking about that earlier when we saw that. So again, I want to darken the sky and maybe even into the sidewalk there, but I don't want to affect the car. So yes. I'm going to go right back here, create new mask, and then you're going to go to this linear gradient. And what you're going to get is this really cool stretching thing, right? So I'm in the sky. I'm even into the sidewalk a little bit, but notice I'm also covering the car, but I want to take the car out of that. This is the simplest thing. I cannot believe how simple this is. With that selected, I'm going to go to subtract. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually su subtract the subject, which is the car. And you'll see here, it has done everything. The car is no longer affected. I have a linear gradient all the way down to there, to the sidewalk. And that's where I can kind of now mess around. Nick, that's can insane. Even look at Look at how this is actually doing. If I really get a dramatic thing here, this is crazy. See what I'm doing. This feels yeah, illegal. Not like it feels I illegal. <laughs> I love that it gave me this. Are these the re results you were expecting? I'm just gonna say yes. Oh yeah. So there we go. We've had this chance to really affect something, do something totally fun and cool, but we're getting those simple tools that are allowing us to kind of take things out or add things in. And we've never even created a physical mask. It's all been done by AI yep. and 
Adobe Sensei. So and really, really cool. Just for reference, you were not able to do this in Lightroom for like a long time. Like yes. there, there was masking, right? but you'd have to go in and do it manually. This is yeah. like a huge improvement. Um, it's like bits and pieces of Photoshop are coming in because it's like, if you're already doing more photo adjusting in Lightroom, you should have this ability to do these things very easily. Synergy. Yes, love it. Synergy. Um, all right, Nick, do you have more things to show in Lightroom? Later on, you want to you want to you want to continue it. with it, or do you want to go on to some of the stuff you're doing? You, uh, you let's call. go. Let's go over to some of the stuff that I'm doing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chat. It's your time to shine, uh, and what we're going to be doing is we are going to be creating a composite in Photoshop. So I'm in Photoshop. Um, Photoshop is used less for. Okay, so here's how I designate it. I'm going to go back to my face so I can look at you. Lightroom. Lightroom is for augmenting the pixels that are already there, right? Yes. Photoshop is for creating new pixels. Mm. Okay, so that, that's how I think about photography, Lightroom versus Photoshop. Lightroom is for editing the pixels, Photoshop is for making new ones, right? And that can be combining pixels, that can be putting pixels next to pixels that weren't there. Um, it is for changing the actual fabric of the photo. Um, Lightroom is not for that. So. Also, I want to uh, give some shout outs to some people in our live chat. If you're watching the replay, hi, hello, drop hey. down below um, what you do th for Thanksgiving. If, <laughs> let's let's if, let's make those comments. If you Come hit on, control need, right, need, you have no idea what we're right. talking about and you just got caught. Um, so to put what you That's do for Thanksgiving. That's going to make them go back and watch from yeah, the beginning. Right? In, the, in yeah. the chat. And I do want to say hi to the live chat that is here. We have Elizabeth. We have Jason, Mimi. We've got our moderator, Wade, Barbara. Nice to see you all. Um, yeah, I know that, thanks for joining us, guys. I know that there's a lot of replays on this show, but if you haven't joined us live before, come join us live. It's really fun, um, and we have a great time every Friday, 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. And our Discord doesn't have anyone in the voice chat right now. So if you want to fix that, if you are currently in the chat on yeah, Behance, come on, over. come on over to Discord right there, discord.gg slash ACC, and join that voice chat because I'm going to bring some of you on. Um, we'll take suggestions from chat as well if you're not comfortable coming on audio. Um, and if you are on YouTube right now, I see a couple of you on YouTube, come over to Behance, behance.net slash mm -hmm. Adobe Live, and join our chat. Um, or join our Discord. And look, at there's more people. Justin's here. Uh, Renetta hey. Hatcher. Renetta Hatcher is a fantastic name, and I feel like Love you're a character name. in a novel. All right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I, I know people are skipping through that, that little section. All right, we're back in it. It's live. It's live. All right, and here we go. All right, so let's learn a little bit about masking in Photoshop. <laughs> I didn't tell them to skip forward. Uh, does right. anybody else do that? Do we get, does anybody else do custom like prompts for each chapter? I think we're the only ones. We're the only ones. Um, all right, so we're here in Photoshop, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the power of Adobe Stock um, to pull in images and then mask those images out. Um, masking is very similar to what's happening in Lightroom, same concept, but we are going to be taking things out of the photos instead of augmenting them. So chat, I need you to give me a location. I need you to give you a, uh, a location and a noun. Two words, a location and a noun. How and we're specific, gonna use those. How specific is the location? Whatever yeah. you want. Um, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Location and a noun, guys. What yes. do we got? And y'all, I'm excited hey. about this. Nathan you got Zachary. Nathan to come over from Nathan YouTube. Nathan Zachary just came over from YouTube. Nathan. Nathan. You, you sorry, this screen. It. Nathan. Find me on social media, send me a DM, Instagram, uh, Twitter, wherever, or send me a message here on Behance, and we're gonna get you a prize. Congratulations, hello, See? thanks so much for coming over. Uh, we're gonna give you a prize from Office Hours. We've got some cool swag for you, uh, and we'll get that sent off. Um, if that's not incentive enough to come over from YouTube, I don't know what is. Right? Um, all right, so someone is saying uh, <laughs> we've got Mars Flight, we have Nashville, we have Antarctica. Antarctica. Um, Ooh, Nashville. I, I like Antarctica. So I'm going to do Antarctica. Yeah, and some... I'm, yeah I'm going to come into um, here. <laughs> you can see the things that I was searching from what I was working on. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich, whole grain, <laughs> healthy sandwich, sandwich. Um, so we're going to type in Antarctica. Ant do we need a, and we need a verb or we need what uh, do we need? We need a noun. Any, noun. Anything. Give us a thing, guys. What do we got? Let's see. Should All be right. coming through soon. I think that I'm going to use. Are we going for something totally, uh, totally foreign to the Antarctica world? Whatever or... we want it to be. Yeah. Let's see. What do we got? 
I'm thinking. Right. Let's use this one because it's really cute. So we're going to use this one of penguins. Uh, and go. Jason's from uh, YouTube as well. Hi, Jason. Hey. Yes. Hey, hey, Andrew. I'm from YouTube as well. Yeah. Too. <laughs> All right. This, this is the last one. This is the last one. Jason, send me a message. I'll send you a prize. Yeah. Nobody else. Nobody else. Congratulations, guys. Send me a message. All right. So I've downloaded that very quickly uh, and very easily from uh, Adobe Stock by just clicking on license. I'm actually on the full version. I didn't realize that I wasn't on the free version, um, but we do what we can. So I'm going to bring this into Photoshop. And I can super easily just click and drag to drop this in. I know I'm not showing Photoshop because I don't want to show you my downloads because there's invoices in there. All right, so um, we're going to pull this and just scale it up and drag it over. We're just going to use these paint. Oh, hold on. We need this little guy. This is oh, a little look at that guy. Right there. I love it. <laughs> All right, That's so great. we have um, our penguins in here, and then we need a noun. Um, Ooh, I like Barbara. She's got a swimming pool. A you, swimming well, pool. That's going to be that hard be, for perspective, you, but you, you know what, Barbara? Yeah. You know what, Barbara? Oh, I'm a, above the ground. I'm going to give it above to you. I'm going to give you an above ground swimming pool. All right. There we go. So we can simply come back to Adobe Stock, and I am going to do above ground pool. You know it's going to be there. This is Adobe Stock. Yep. Everything. Boom. Um, all right. So let's find one to where it is at a similar angle. That'll just say this one. Never mind. We're just using this oh, one because it's cute. The inflatable one is yep. even better. I love all it. All right. So this is going to be our uh, <laughs> pool. We're going to go ahead and license this. And actually, it's going to save to my library. So I'm not going to download it. I'm going to hit license. There you go. Uh, it's going to download automatically. But I can see that it is um, going to be saved to my library. And let's go ahead and put this in Adobe Abroad. Why not? I love that little prompt it gives you every time you hit the license button, right? You get that great thing to tell you where exactly it's going to be and yep. you can find it. So now I don't have to bring anything in. I can simply come to my libraries right here and it's gonna open over on the corner. Right here you can see those libraries. And once it syncs, give it a second, there we go. Um, we're going to go to Adobe Abroad and we will find filter, oops. Let's do, mm, let's just scroll and find it. Actually, can I just type in stock? Or is it pool? There you go. So it you can search. I, I I don't know if I, I should have pointed that out. You can search. So if you ever have a library and you have things named, oh, you can literally tip. just do a search, which is great. Because um, I'm not the best at keeping library. You know, when you leave a library open for a while, yes. you got a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> yes. All right. So we're going to give these guys a little great. pool. And what oh, we're going to do great. is we're going to place... <coughs> my goodness. We're going to place that right there. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do some masking, but we're going to do some selection tools first. So this is on a yes. white background, which is very helpful for us. Um, so what we can do is there are a couple ways. We can use the magic wand tool. So the first one is over here in the right, just magic wand. And we would come over here and we would select the white space. And then we would have what we want, right? We can hit on the masking yep. bottom right corner and it will take away. There we go. If I invert it, control I, uh, it will take away everything. So we can have this nice little mask yes. right there. Perspective is perfect, by the way. Great. Perspective is perfect. Um, mm -hmm. So another way that we can do it is we can delete this layer mask. And we can use a new tool, which is the object selection tool. Now, you can see this little thing going boop, 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 boop. It's finding all the objects in this, uh, in this kind of composition. And now you can see it highlights in blue when it says, hey, is this an object? And we say, you know what? This is an object, right? This is the same is. thing that Nick did, right? That it's like, oh, yeah. you want the pool, this pool? And I simply click on it and boom, it's selected. So I can hit right here on the mask and now we have it masked out. Now, here's a here's a little hack that I learned recently. Oh, so this is my this, favorite Andrew hack. Yeah, so see far. this little white space right here? I'm gonna go full screen for this. You don't need to see my face. See this little <laughs> white uh, line that's happening here? A lot of times you'll see that and it will kind of break um, It'll kind of break the illusion of your composite. So what I can it do... It ruins the reality. Yep. You know? I'm going to hold control, and that is going to mask, right? It's going to select that mask right here. Correct. So you can see the white arrow means that that is selected, and the black arrow means that it's not selected. So with that selected, I can go select, modify, and contract. I want to bring it in. So I'm going to go to contract, and then I'm going to do it by two pixels. Uh, and right now I'm just kind of thinking that's what it looks like two pixels mm -hmm. right here. So I'm going to hit OK. And it's contracted by two pixels. And now all I need to do is I can just delete this layer mask and then make a new one by clicking right there. And look at that. Now we have this nice wow. clean edge without that little white outline. So good. And even, you know, that might be so delicate there, but it really does make the difference 
with the optics. Right yep. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of work on the scale here a little bit. So those yeah. uh, guys look like they can kind of jump in. And then something's happening right here that I'm yeah, not in love with there. is there's like a little mound. Mm -hmm. And so what I can do super easily is I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this layer because it was a smart object. And I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool and I'm just going to click and drag over this mound here. Oh, I think I know what you're going to do. Watch this. Right click, fill, content, content aware fill. Content aware. Oh, uh, if you no. wanted to smooth out that mountain, boom, <laughs> done. Right? And so let's say that I want to also do Sensei. that with some of these other ones. <laughs> I can simply come in here and just continue hitting that fill. And it's yeah. going to fill and smooth out this perspective for me uh, very quickly and very easily. And I think it's probably better to do it in the little chunks that you're doing. I think you get a little more of a natural um, result, right? Yep. When you do that. If you did one big block, I think it could get a little bit messy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, let's add one more thing in here. We've got plenty of time. So we're going to add in one more thing. Um, and chat, what would you like to add in here to composite? Ooh. I have an idea, but I'm going to wait for someone to say it. All right. So let's do this. I want to real quick uh, give this little guy yes. a friend. You got to give him some love. Yeah. We want to give him some love. So <laughs> I what I can do is, again, we're going to do a, a mask by just using the object selection tool. I'm going to make sure that my layer is selected here, and we're going to go to object selection. And it is going to actually, I'll zoom out so you can see what's about to happen, is it's finding all the objects in here. And I'm guessing that it's going to break out each of these uh, as their own. So let's see. Yep. Wow. So now we have each of these penguins. Look at that. It, even when they overlap, it's making it so that they are their own wow. things. Like right here, right? Yeah. So this little guy, our little cutie, we're going to go ahead and select him. Now, as I come back here, you can see that there is a little shadow. So if I hover yes. over, it's actually just selecting him. But I want to get him and the shadow. So check this out. We're going to click and drag around him. Follow those nice. curves. And watch what and by happens. By the way, I think we have our we have our next item. I, I saw it. Yeah, that's yeah, great. So that's it is now selected that object off the background as well as the shadow. Mm -hmm. And what I can do is with that selected, just hit Control or Command J, and that's going to make a copy of our little friend. So now I can click and drag, great. and now he has another little friend. Amazing. Let's put him up here. Love maybe it. it'll be maybe it'll be his kid. There you go. Or just perspective. Yep. <laughs> we'll shrink it down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, sorry, buddy, hold on, cut his, <laughs> cut his head off. And oh, then I'm going to change it so that he's looking the other way. So I, I would have done that with the entire Perfect. image, but I wanted to make it so that the shadow was yeah. the same. Love that. Great idea. Nice little tip. So now we got two, two little guys. Two yeah. little guys hanging out. All right. What is our next object that we are going to be adding to our composite? So Jason would like to add a slide, and I think that would be perfect. That's a great one. They absolutely need a slide. I love that one. All yes, right, so, pool, pool noodles would have been a good one, too. Oh, pool love noodles. That. So we're just going to do a slide. Um, I do want... Oh, that's funny. It's pulling in, like, slide slides. Um, this one actually looks oh, pretty wow. good. Let's see if we can make this work. I like the way that's angled. I think that could be, like, almost behind or to the side of it, maybe. Yep. Or you can extend the the legs a little bit. Yeah, the perspective is really nice. Mm -hmm. And so it is going to go ahead and sync again to that Adobe Abroad um, and come into Photoshop. And let's watch it populate right here. Let's go slide, children's slide, boom, right there. So we're gonna click and drag this in here. And where do we want the slide to be? Oh, let's put it behind these guys. Let's do that. Yeah, there you go. So let's have the slide right here. And again, very easily and very quickly, we can select this in a different way. We can go up to select and we can select subject and it's going to find the subject for us just like Nick did, exact same thing that Nick did. Um, it's gonna it. find the subject and it looks like it missed a little bit of the poles. So I'm actually on this one because it's white, I'm just gonna use the magic wand tool, it's easy. So we'll do white and check this out. I will click on the white, but it's not hitting the parts in here. I can right click and go to select similar. And it will find all of the all of that color for me. Pretty cool. I don't think we need to worry about this just because. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, that might be. I think you we're okay. Might need like, yeah. Yeah. So what I'm gonna always, do is because I have the white selected, I'm gonna go to select. I'm gonna go to modify, and I'm gonna expand that selection by one pixel, um, and that's just gonna bring everything down. It looks like it might actually cut some of it out, but we'll see. Control I. Yeah, cut it too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. 
And Wade was giving me a, a little tip. If I hit control, mm, what was the, Wade had a hotkey for actually making the invert of the mask. So I'm just gonna oh, control I to that? invert it right there. Ooh, that looks really good so far. The perspective is not wrong on that. Yeah. All right, so now what it I wanna do is I wanna grab these penguins and make yeah. it so that this slide is behind the penguins. The great thing right. is I can grab my object selection tool right here and it's already mm -hmm. found these penguins for me. So if I go to this layer, right, it's found on these penguins, I can just hold shift and I'm clicking here to grab this. Or I could simply click and drag around all these penguins and it should find all of those edges of the penguins for me. There we go. It's found all of our penguin friends and I can come back to our slide and just use the brush tool by hitting B to brush out our friends. So fun. Looks like we missed maybe a little bit of the wing here, but I think that's it. So let me paint in this wing. Yeah. Again, we're just using the brush tool here to paint in this wing. And I'm using black and white. So when I use white, oops, when I use uh. black, excuse me. There we go. It's going to paint that in for me. So we're nice. just going to paint around here and there we go. So we've got those guys looking pretty good with that slide. Um, this is really fun. And we've even got the little shadow of the slide uh, under there as well. So everything is looking good or okay, but I wanna make sure that it looks cohesive all together. So we're gonna do this in two ways. Nick, pick a number between yeah. one and two. Between one and two? <laughs> 1.5 is the answer. Pick, pick, pick a number <laughs> one or two. How about that? Two. Two. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to show you how to do this without neural filters. So um, there's an easy way to do this and there is a custom way to do this. Let's do the custom way, just because we wanna teach you everything here. Um, and someone is asking, could we use the object selection tool to select line art and fill the inside? Yes. Yes. Yes is the answer. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, do a couple ways. So what we wanna do is we're gonna add stuff on top of this to pull it together. And this is my favorite thing to do in Photoshop is to add a gradient mask. So on our top layer, we're gonna go ahead and right here, it's a circle with a slash through it. We're going to go to gradient map. Oh. So you can see we've already started to pull everything together, but what we can do is we can actually augment the tones of all of these different pieces. So check this out. We want the uh, brightest over here to just be full white, right? That's gonna knock out. So the left are the brightest portions and the right are the darkest portions. So in the dark portions, we're actually gonna change these to a nice uh, blue, right? Because we're in our in ant, Antarctica, my goodness. Uh, and so we have a nice little blue and I'm gonna grab this blue and hit okay, right? It looks crazy right now, but what I'm about to do is change the blending mode of this gradient map, right? And because the gradient map is over all of the objects, it's going to apply this color tone to all of those objects and help it look like it is cohesive. So check this out. We're going to go to multiply and you can already see that everything's getting that nice blue tint, right? So mm -hmm. check this out. Let's turn it on and off just so you can see. They look like they're different lighting. It looks like things are a little bit weird, but when I turn this on, everything started to get that getting nice blue little, tint. Yeah, like a universal lighting on there. Yep, exactly. So something else that I will do is uh, in situations like this, sometimes I will fake a sun. Uh, and mm. this is exactly how Nick created, um, what is happening? The radial. Why is it Yes, uh, this is, uh, yes, exactly, radial. So I'm just gonna use the brush though, and I'm going to right click and make this a very large brush, and we're gonna make it very soft. And I mean very large, like massive. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna change this color to yellow. And then what I'm gonna do is come up in the corner here. Let's make this brush bigger. I want it like to be pretty much the entire thing. So we're just yeah. gonna click, and there we go. So we've got this like fake sun happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, we could have done this with a gradient. We could have done this with a different brush. But what I can do is come down here and do maybe a soft control light it. or an overlay. Yeah, and start to yeah. control a little bit of that color over the whole image. It's really neat. Each one of those options kind of tells a totally different story of what this could possibly be. Yep, you know? absolutely. And it's something that maybe we want to come in here and add some color. Uh, we probably want to do a soft light here. Uh, and that's looking 
pretty okay to me. So it's looking yeah, all right. Bad. Something else that we can do is we can add some curves. So this will change the curves of the entire image. And the curves usually just want to follow what's happening here with this image, right? So now we've got that dark sky and then those nice bright lights. It's looking a little intense, but we're going with it. We'll, we'll roll with it. We're going to do it the better way and the easier way in a second. Um, so we can add as many augmentations on top and that will help us to really pull everything together. The last thing that I like to do with an image is make a new layer, control shift N, and we are going to fill this with an overlay mode and a 50% gray. So you need to make sure that those two are checked and we're gonna hit okay and then go to filter. Oops, we wanna make sure right here we have black and white. So you can hit X and D. If you hit X yep. and D, it will just reset those for you. We're going to go to filter, we're gonna to go to noise and then we are going to add noise. And what's happening is because this layer right here is 50% gray and set to overlay, it's actually just going to push everything through, right? So it's gonna be overlay, takes away all the lights. Um, and so it's allowing us to only grab the darks of the noise. So I'm gonna add like a 3% noise on this. Maybe let's do four. Maybe let's do six. Yeah. Mm, let's do five. All right, so we're gonna hit okay. And as we zoom in here, you can see that noise over the whole image is really helping this image out. And you can see this poor guy, had some issues. But what's great <laughs> is I can come in here and just fix the selection, is grab our object selection tool. We're gonna select this guy and then I'm just gonna go in and we're gonna do that modify. We are going to contract by just 0.5 pixels this time. Let's do one, all right. There you go. So one pixel and then I'm just gonna brush out on the slide that sweet little man. Oops, wrong way. Oh, Let's go ahead and invert way. that selection. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And I'll just paint out some of this white that is around him. Uh, nice and then it looks like touch, yeah. I also want to paint in. Oops. That little piece right there. There we go. All right, as I zoom out, there we go. So it's gotten a little bit better and it's looking pretty good as far as cohesion, right? So it looks pretty good as far as cohesion. Let me go ahead and make a group so that we can all see the difference between the two. Let yeah. me move those up so that I can put my beautiful face on the screen. All right, so here we go. Uh, all of our augmentations are right here. So this is the after, this is the before. So see how it really pulls it together by adding those augmentations on top. Um, and just like I said, it's smushing yeah. those pixels together so that they work together. Like each picture had its own tone, texture, everything, and a great way to unify it, particularly that last step. It yep. really brings it to a uniform consistency, which is really nice. Absolutely, I love it, but we're gonna delete all of it. All right, so the reason we're gonna delete all of it is because we are going to use something called a neural filter, and this is option number one. Um, and the pool needs a shadow, thank you. Someone asked about shadows. Um, I'll, add, I'll add that in a second. I'll show you how to add a, a shadow in a second. All right, um, let's go ahead and go to filter, and we're gonna click on neural filters. Now, we're gonna go ahead and do a very hard uh, um, warning here. Uh -oh. Neural filters sometimes can like hit pretty hard. And what I'm gonna do is maybe gonna hit a little hard. So if it gets choppy, if it gets weird, just know that's what's happening. Yeah. All right, so here we go, especially because I'm streaming while I do this. So over here, we have some beta apps, uh, some beta neural filters. Uh, hopefully you've used some of these just because they're really fun. Uh, but we're gonna use the harmonization filter and I'm just gonna click this on. And the harmonization filter is we're going to select the reference image. So the reference image is basically whatever we want to harmonize everything with. Here is the background, right? We want it to be the background. So I'm gonna select layer. It's just gonna be this Adobe stock background. It's the tones, it's the color, it's the light. It's usually whatever has the sky in it is yeah. honestly the answer. So And it's the most, the majority too, which is kind of nice to choose. Yep. So I'm gonna click on this. It's processing on the device and it will harmonize. So you can see that it's already pulled this, this down. Uh, let's pull it less harmony. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably want more cyan. There you go. Probably a little more green here. Uh, a little more blue, a lot more blue actually. Like that. Pull that saturation up. 
And all right, that's looking pretty good. So you can see that it started to pull that together. Uh, I wanted to pull the slide in and I don't know why it's not pulling the slide in. It should be uh, pulling the slide as well. It should be changing it to the, the neuro filters of it the background. It should be, correct? it should, yes. It is maybe only it changing. A, it got okay. a little bit, but maybe just not strong enough. Here's maybe, here's maybe what's happening. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and merge everything down into its own image. Uh, and I should know how to do this better, but I don't. So we're gonna hit Control, Alt, Shift, E. And what that does is it's going to make a copy of whatever everything looks like, right? So it's a copy of exactly what was there. So with yeah. this selected, and I believe that's what was happening is the neuro filter was only applying to the pool because it was the only one I selected. So we're gonna go to filter, neural filters. And from here, this is going to work. I'm telling you right now. Uh, we can go over to harmonization. The filter requires a layer with a mask or transparency. Mm. Y'all, I'm so confused about what's happening uh -oh. right here. I'll be honest. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna try this one more time. Let's see. All right, we put a mask on it. We're going to neural filters. This is when it falls apart. Also, hi, if you never joined Office Hours before, this is a dumpster fire of a show that happens every Friday, but it's fun. Um, I like this. It's like watching a train wreck, but like a train wreck like of a circus. Like there's confetti and clowns. One. Yeah, it's a fun yeah. one. <laughs> Would it apply to a group? You know what? Oh, 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 Cody, this is why I love live chat. You're right, yeah. we need to make it a smart object. I think that that's what I need to do. So uh... let's do that. So let's do this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right, here we go. Here we go. One more time, everybody. So I'm just hitting Control J to make a copy of that group. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just ungroup this stuff uh, underneath just because. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm going to convert to a smart object, right? That's making all of our pieces a smart object. Now I'm gonna go to filter, no filters, everyone cross your fingers. Say a little prayer for me. And we're going to do harmonization. We're going to select layers. Yes, 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 yes. Go. We're gonna do that background. Ah, a little bit better. Look at that. We did it. Look at, look at the tonal value in all the penguins too. That's really cool. Yep, they so I definitely- a little bit like a yellow tint to it. It's really neat. Yep, I definitely want it to be brighter. I definitely want it to be more blue. Uh, the It looks like it's a little red, so we want that cyan. There we go. And then a little bit more of that, go. Oh, ooh. Actually, maybe we want this right in the middle. Oh, that feels neat. It's got a old postcard vibe to it. Yep, so we're grabbing that cyan. That's looking pretty good. And let's hit it with a lot of strength. Uh, it's too much. All right, so we're gonna hit okay. It's gonna output to a new <laughs> layer. And now we have a full new layer, right? So that the was- train wreck is back on track. Thank you, Cody. Thank you. Or actually, wait, that was awesome. <laughs> pretty good. So something we can do like, is we could yeah. probably blur some of these edges out. I pretty much always will go to filter noise and add just a little bit of noise on top. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do probably 3% here. Or what I'll do is do 5% and then blur, blur. by one pixel. Yeah. Always a good little move there. Love we got that. we got secrets. So you can blur by one pixel, or you can blur by 0.4 is usually the smallest that you can go to kind yeah. of even things out. So hit OK. There you go. And check that out. Right, this looks like it's a photo. So we are missing a shadow here, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and add that in. What's great is because we have masking capabilities, what I can do is I can just make a new layer here and I'm gonna paint in a shadow just freehand. This is gonna look so bad, but like, whatever. All right, so we'll do like a shadow that like feels here and then maybe like loops back over here. Great, mm -hmm. wow, great job, Andrew. Hey, welcome back. Hard to tell. <laughs> Are we back? Here we go. Hold give on. Us, Let's wait for give it. Give us a, a note in in chat if we are back. Fingers crossed. We are not currently back. We're back. We're back. There All right, we we're back. Hey. <sighs> it's not it's office okay. hours if something doesn't crash, and I don't know why it. it I don't know what happened. Crashing hours. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Crashing Hours, uh, where Andrew also cannot uh, change the scene. We are good. So we're going to do we this fully manually. Um, all right. So we got 10 more minutes. There we go. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to, my goodness, uh, grab our pool. We already have a mask of that, and we can just mask our shadow out. There you go. And then take the opacity down to maybe 20%. A little bit of a shadow there. And we could do the yeah. same thing for the pool, just tiny little shadows underneath these lines. 
All right, those look terrible. So we're just gonna undo those. All right, it looks pretty good from where we started, right? So let's go mm -hmm. ahead and I'm gonna make a group real quick and we'll see, this is where we started. Are you ready? Boom, that's where we started and this is where we ended. That's puns and that's unifying, a, just so cool the way that all comes together. It's pretty cool. That's wild. All right, we got about Those ten more tips. minutes, uh, and so Nick, I think that you want to show a couple more uh, pieces in Lightroom. Yeah, we Lightroom. got a few that we can show you in Lightroom. The first one I want to show you is kind of like color range, and color range is another way you can actually pull and make a mask from something where it might be tough to kind of ask. AI or Sensei to find something in there, which is kind of like unique to what you want here. So let's say we only want to change skin tone and maybe add a little texture and lighten up the skin tone of this picture. We could do it very easily again by just hitting our mask button. And what we're going to do is, you know, we had all these other ones here and the one that we did not try was something a little bit different and that's color range. So when you scroll down to here and you hover over it, what it's going to do now is it's going to, you're going to pick part of the skin, something, let's say there's a common color throughout the entire uh, composition that you want to grab. So what it's done is it's basically found all the skin textures. We have our overlay as green, but if we do want to get rid of some stuff, what I could do is I can actually subtract, let's say we just want to make sure that hair is not in there as well. So from there, I can take that, get the brush, and what I could do is kind of just scrub in here and you can see what it does, it's taking out that green in the mask. So you can go over all the areas that you kind of want. You can see the reds kind of coming in there. What I like about this is we're probably gonna get a really cool, unique kind of like technique in here by just doing this randomly and getting in certain areas that maybe leaving some of that area in the green. So I'm just gonna do that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, but, welcome to Wicked, the Valentine's yes. Day special. <laughs> there you <It's>, go. <laughs> people are saying so watch, she holds the Grinch, yeah. <laughs> so notice, look at how her skin color is the only thing really changing in here. I'm gonna go drastic to show you, drastic this way. But as well, let's say someone wants a little bit more of the texture or something in there, because it's a little too smooth. Again, only affecting that, we can get that dehazing down a little bit as well too. And all we're doing is effectively going to that little area that was right there and you can see the difference. We've yep. only done the actual skin tone. Yep. So and that's exactly what I was map. talking about. So Nick, um, yeah. that's exactly what I was talking about that if we edited this just with her face and we pulled mm -hmm. the warmth up, um, so in the color panel, if we pulled it to the right um, yes. uh, into that yellow. Uh, so scroll up a little bit. Where are we? Uh, exposure, temp, yeah. So if you pull that to the right to make it warmer on her skin, yeah. it would, if you didn't deselect it, make those teeth and eyes yellow. So it makes your teeth super yellow. And so using oh, this yeah. tool- good, good, good point. Uh, makes there it so you that go. you have very crisp teeth. Yes. So the other thing we have is we also have this really cool thing that's called intersect masks. And that's a really cool way to get a mask, but then customize it just a little bit to work for what you're trying to do. So for that, I'm going to use this image here. And so I'm gonna basically do the same thing. I'm gonna get this. We're gonna use the radial gradient like we used before. And I'm gonna put it like over the can here like this, okay? So perfect. Once I've done that, I can go in here and you can see I'm changing just that, but it's also changing areas around the can. See how it's like, giving it that halo around there. So there's ways we could do something here. We can actually subtract here. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna hit this. We got our mask over here. And I think it was on this one. Let's see, no, here, subtract. And we're gonna go to subject. So select subject, there we go. So now when we make those changes, you can see these are going away from the can. That's kind of the different thing that we didn't wanna do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get rid of that one. We'll get rid of it where it's there. We'll go back, we'll do our radio gradation. So here, radio gradient. And I think it was something else that I was supposed to pick instead of that. I think it was intersect mask. So let's see, is it here? Here we go, intersect mask using the subject. So now what this is gonna do, now I'm gonna affect only the can. That's so good and nothing else. So see how more contrast there? Let's get this a little bit lighter, but I'm not actually getting that. So it's another quick way to isolate one particular area that you want. Notice the red's going in there, notice the green's going there. Not affected anywhere else, but just that can, and we did it by just using that intersect mask. So 
the, the neat thing about it is it's this adding and subtracting thing. It's giving you presets that you would probably already have in your mind. Yes, I want to get rid of the sky. That's your way of doing it. So two other unique ways that you can kind of do these unique masks in yep. Lightroom, all with just simple clicks, nothing artistic. And uh, okay. a great, uh, great comment here from our friend Chris is saying, I've been doing this the hard way. I will try this. Yes, I've been That's doing this the same way. That's our best compliment we can get. Yes, we want to make that, your right? life easier here on Office Hours. Okay. Um, and that's the whole vibe. All right, Nick, we have five minutes left, and I do want to spend those five minutes uh, in a very special place that is warm to our hearts, and that's Discord. We love our Let's Discord. Get in there. Uh, where can people get involved and watch Discord? Oh, it's hard for me to raise this hand, but I'm going to use this one. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right there. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like, no. Um, yeah. So right there, you can, oh, join, <laughs> you can join our Discord. And if you were one of the, yes, someone is asking, uh, where can I send a message if you've won today? If you won a prize today, write down here, discord.gg slash ACC. Uh, or if you want to, you can DM me. My buttons don't work. Let's see if my buttons work. My buttons still don't work. Uh, you can DM me. <laughs> Hold, please. I'm doing all this manually today. Uh, right here. So hawk.co, uh, H-O-C-H-D-O-T-C-O. That's my social. You can just DM me here. Uh, wait, I'll drop a link in there, or you can do it Perfect. over in discord as well. Um, and yes, a great question. Wow. Great question here from chat. What Lightroom trick did you use to change the color of Andrew's hair? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yep. Dave. That's... I did that right before. He didn't even know it was in the live feed. So fantastic. Yeah. It's, oh, what? Oh my goodness. What a crazy filter that you use in Lightroom. It's uh, the butterscotch uh, selective tool. The butterscotch. Yeah. Butterscotch select. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's go ahead and hop into discord and take a look at some stuff that people were doing um, and creating. Last week we had worked in Lightroom and we have some friends. Um, oh, nobody got the tiny hands. All right, we'll get we'll we'll get you your tiny hands. All right, so over here, uh, let's do the one with our faces. There we go. So we had some friends that did the homework and we do have a homework channel right here. Um, and we had somebody who posted low key artsy posted on Behance. So we love Behance here hey, on Behance. Idea. So let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, what a great, oh. this is a great thing to post as a Behance little project. Yes. Is your, your skills with and Photoshop and all these different things. This so is great. Behance has an integration with Lightroom to where you can see the before and after and look I can click and drag. Oh my gosh. I'm going to make a whole section just because this exists. This is so cool. Yes. Uh, and someone's wow. asking, Lightroom can work with video now. Yes, Lightroom can work yeah, with video thanks, now. Yeah, thanks, Wade. You're right. So great job. This is looking fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and scroll down and look at some more of these photos here. Oh my goodness. Wow. This is so neat. For those of you that this is a service that you have, like that you love doing for either freelance or side business, why not show this off in your Behance? This is fantastic. Yep. To and the non-creatives, this is what they want to see that you would do, yep. right? This is incredible. Oh, this is great. Love that. Good of you to put this on there and show it off. This is great. Love it. Man, that is so cool. All the sliders what of Behance option. Idea. Yep. The sliders are integrated into Behance, I believe. I, like, I'm pretty, I'm like 95% yes, sure. Yes, you, yeah. you showed it when we were showing the integration I, through Behance and Discover, right? I taught you how to do this at some point. Yeah, take the credit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. These are looking good. Uh, this is actually me. This is me uh, in the city just posing, uh, looking go. fierce right there. So great wow, job. It's like a totally different picture. It's a totally that's different so picture. Uh, we great also had job. our friend, I believe Katarina, yes, did some of these. And you can see mm. the before and afters here. Ooh, we did a zoom in here. Wow. This, this composition is so much better and the sky Look looks incredible. That. That's great. Even just the framing, what a better choice of crop there. Love that. Nice. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Look at the tones on that flower. You would have never seen all that that extra detail in there. Look at that. That's wonderful. That's wild. Ooh, what's this? Oh, wow. That's fantastic. What? Ooh, that's cool. You took it the other way on this one. Yeah, so this has, it looks like, okay, so. Very artistic. Let's go ahead and dissect this. We have one minute left. Cherry? What's, what's happening here, it's a, it's a cherry. What's happening here, elements being used, texture increased, clarity yes. increased. Um, selective color for just that purple, right? Yeah. It looks like everything went black and white. So we have selective color on just the purple. We have the highlights being increased right here. And then we have the shadows. It looks like maybe having the shadows either increased or using color grading to make them a dark purple. 
Great so job. So cool. So if you- it's, it's a totally different image. Like yes. that to me looks like a movie poster now on the right. Yep, great know? job. So homework this week, composite an image or yeah. do some masking in Lightroom and post it in our Discord. Um, we'll be checking out, having some fun and uh, be back next week to talk more about that. Uh, Nick, next week, yeah. if you are watching this, uh, Nick, what's happening next week? This is my favorite thing to do at the end of the show. Nick, what, what are we doing on our show next week? Oh, wow. Are we going back to 301? Not quite. Next Not week, yet. we are kicking <laughs> off a full week of educator content. So we're celebrating right. back to school. And next week will be a bunch of resources for educators. If you are going to be here next week, tune in live, join the Discord, because we will all be making resources for teachers together. We'll be making a shared yes. library. Um, so join us next week, set your calendars. We're gonna be helping out teachers all across the world by making free assets for them because they deserve it. <laughs> I love seeing oh no's in the chat. All right, Nick, we're about to get cut off. We have like 20 seconds. Where can people watch? And how do they, how does it, quick. Every have, Friday, 2.30, 2 .30 p.m. Pacific time, behance.net slash Adobe Live. Yes, Join come us. back next week. Sorry for all the crashes. We'll figure it out next week. Bye.